to record and I see one of these things or just trying to mind my business and he just hanging out. I guess he minding his business too. Right there. Yeah. See that crane fly? Oh, hey. Mm. Hey. Uh -huh. Get up. Get away from me. <laughs> Child, when I tell you this man is determined to get this bug, he is determined. He is not stopping at nothing until he kill this bug. Like, Mexican men, they are so focused and they won't stop till they get the job done. <laughs> Price is right. <laughs> oh, I think he's right. I think it is. I think he smashed it. <laughs> oh, right there by that light. Ciao. That was a fight. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm gonna get this video out. You hear me? <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Listen, I was about to go out. I was just about to head out and run some errands because I want to get a mattress for my bedroom. I wanted to get um, just like some few little things that I need to get toiletries, groceries, stuff like that. But I was like, pause because this is tax season. A lot of people are going through the same situation, but. Yes, as you know by the title, IRS took my taxes. IRS took all of my taxes. When I tell you I claimed all three of my kids this year, I claimed all three of my kids this year, and they took every last single dime this year. This is not the first time they've taken my taxes. Let me tell you the first time. First time they took my taxes, they took like $7,000. It was to go towards student loan debt. If you don't know, I went to school to be a um, licensed cosmetologist, and I also went to school to be a registered nurse, but I didn't see it through all the way. Getting distracted and, you know, dropping out. So yes, I'm a college dropout, but I still accrued debt. And, you know, just being a mother and trying to, a single mother at that, and just trying to handle bills and things on your own, things become tight. I mean, it, it was tight, okay? So I wasn't able to pay it. IRS was like, okay, well, you're not gonna pay it, then we won't take it. <laughs> That's just how they do. Like, they are such, I want to say robbers and thieves, because that's how I feel. Like, you know how the economy is. You know things. I mean, even if you did have a six-figure job, most of the time you still need to do something on the side just to bring in some extra income because times are not the way it used to be. So fast forward, they took my taxes again. And it's because I pay child support. So for those of you who do not know, my son lives with his dad 
and I pay child support to him. I've been asked him to take me off of child support. He won't take me off child support. I send money to my son. My son is almost, he'll be 18 soon. Uh, well, next year, he'll be 18. So I'll be done with the child support thing. But I'm just saying, in, in between time, in the meantime, can you take me off child support? My son has his own job. I send him money. What do you need child support for? I mean, granted, I know he lives with you, but that's really like by choice because he doesn't have to stay with him. He could stay with me. But listen, it's a whole scenario. I fought for full custody, but at the time I just was not in a proper headspace. And then I recently had lost my husband at the time. Child, I was going through some stuff. You hear me? And this guy, my son's dad, decided, okay, well, I'm gonna take her to, I'm gonna take advantage of this opportunity. Like he really, when I tell you, I just felt like that was so evil, y'all. I felt it was so evil. Even before my husband passed, he knew that he, my baby father was trying to get child support out of me and my husband was like don't do that like don't try to take her down there for child i mean you know don't file for child support it's, it's enough you got custody we do our part we send money but don't don't do the child support route he told my husband like okay it's cool to send out a turn right around and took me down there for child support i was like yo so anyway fast forward to today um i thought that when I started with um, my company that I'm with now, I thought I switched over all my information in July last year when I started. They telling me, oh, well, we didn't get the information. And I'm like, I talked to the lady in Maryland. I don't know if y'all deal with child school people in Maryland, but they a little bit um, ghetto sometimes or just like, don't want to be bothered type situation. So I don't know if she was just saying stuff just to say it. I don't know. But I know I did my part. I know for certain that... Hold on. My cousin is calling me. So it was my cousin. She told me my aunt She told me my aunt is in hospice She said She is stage four Stage four lung cancer, stage four brain cancer, stage four bone cancer. Three different cancers. She said, the doctor said she, she only have days or weeks to live. She don't have months and years. That's what the doctor said. But I know, I know God is a healer. I know cancer is not too hard for God to heal. I just pray that if you are a prayer warrior, that you will keep my aunt in your prayers. I'm praying that she will walk out of that hospice care and this will be a testimony for her. I pray that every cancer cell would leave her body in the name of Jesus. I pray health and restoration for her in the name of Jesus. I pray restoration in her brain and her bones. I pray restoration in her lungs from the top of her head to the crown of her feet. I pray restoration. I pray that this will not end in death. but that she will be able to live vibrantly and have another chance at life and life more abundantly.
I'm sorry. But this is my wilderness. Some people get on YouTube and they tell you, you know, look at me now. Things are so great and I'm in this beautiful high ride, shop this nice car and I got all this money in the bank. I'm married now and life is so great. But nobody films when you're in the wilderness. Nobody films when you're going through the struggle. Don't nobody want to see that. But the thing is, people need to see that to know that they are not alone. My main purpose for making a video from the beginning was to bring encouragement to those who, you know, lost the taxes. But dang, I didn't know my cousin was going to tell me that. I noticed she had called me yesterday when I was driving the bus and Whew, I had answered that driving the bus channel that I don't even know. Mm. But listen, I know God is a healer and he can restore. So there may be people right now dealing with relatives or even yourselves may have cancer. I want you to keep your faith in God and know that he's a healer and that he can restore you. He can heal you. It's so crazy because when I first got got the news about my tax money, I was trying so hard not to make myself cry. Because I was like, why in the world would I cry over some money? But I felt like they were emotions that I needed to get out. And now, it's like... Whatever emotions come, you have to get those emotions out. You cannot just bottle them up. Because if you keep it bottled up, it'll turn into stress. It could affect your body negatively and negatively. <laughs> and mm -mm -mm. I know it's going to get better. Because, you know, joy comes in the morning. Trouble doesn't last. Jesus, he collects our tears. He he could turn our pain into joy and our sorrow into laughter. He could turn this test into a testimony. And I was like, should I just not record the rest of this video because like this is a serious situation right here. I love my aunt. I really do. She has two girls and a granddaughter. And it's so crazy because my aunt Paulette reminds me of me and my two daughters. <laughs> and every time I, I, I always think about her and I'm just like, I want an aunt Paulette that with all this attitude, all these emotions <laughs> and things, you know. But I just ask that you keep me and my family in prayer. But just know that even if the government took your taxes, even if you're going through a wilderness season, remember, trouble will not last. Joy is coming in the morning. It's going to get better. <laughs>